Alright guys, I finally managed to get some facts and footage of Traveller's Tales' platformer game, Haven Call of the King. So before we move on to the modern era of Traveller's Tales, let's look at this forgotten platformer made by them. The story is about the evil Lord Vesh, who has taken over the planets and has infected people with a virus to become his slaves. One guy that was affected by the virus but not enslaved is a guy called Haven, who now sets out on a journey to get the antidote for the virus, defeat the evil Lord Vetch, save his people and the world overall. So the game, like I said, is a basic platformer. You take control of Haven who has the standard platformer abilities like jump, attack and a few special moves that he can use to help him on his journey. The game has a wide variety of levels to go through and each of them have a specific task to accomplish like getting from point A to point B or collecting a number of feathers to help advance to another level. Despite the game being a platformer however, it also takes some elements from other genres. Some levels will have a mini game for you to participate in or just to get a new collectible. There are racing missions which can be extremely annoying at times dogfighting in the skies, shooting down pirates, pirate ships in the seas, and the levels themselves also have some puzzle solving involved. Just like any other platformer, the game also has a few boss fights, which to be honest are extremely forgettable and I can't even remember one boss I fought in the game. Now judging by this game's gameplay and graphics, you may think that it looks and feels very familiar to Jack and Daxter the Precursor Legacy, right? However, the game still has some redeeming qualities, some of the levels offer some fun challenge that's enjoyable, and the music of the game is pretty nice to listen to as well. There really isn't much to say on this title however. On its release, it only got average reviews from critics, and the sales were extremely poor. A sequel for the game was also in the making, but because of the game's poor reception, it got ditched immediately. So now that we got that out of the way, let's move back to Traveller's Tales' time in the modern era. During this time, this, it seems that the company was getting a little lazy. Most of the games they released for the modern era were either clumsy sports games or typical movie based games that were just made solely for the purpose of advertisement. They even made an entry to the Super Monkey Ball series entitled Super Monkey Ball Adventure, which just like the other games Traveller's Tales made at the time, turned out to be a huge flop. The only big hit that they had at the time was Lego Star Wars. This game, as you can tell, is an adaption of the Star Wars prequel trilogy, but instead all of the characters are made out of Lego. The gameplay for Lego Star Wars is basically an action adventure with cooperative gameplay, which makes the gameplay more family friendly than the previous games made by Traveller's Tales. The game has three chapters all based on the Star Wars movies, with a total of 56 playable characters, and each scenario in the chapter gives you two different characters to play as, with their own different abilities, and just like any other co-op game, you can switch between these characters at any given time by just walking up and touching them. The game's main collectibles are called studs, which can be obtained by destroying enemies and objects or finding them in a hidden spot. By collecting enough of, enough of these studs can be used to purchase and unlock new playable characters in the free play mode. You can also obtain golden bricks by collecting studs that can be traded for cheats. However, instead of a life system, getting killed in the game will cost you half of the studs you collected. Whilst the game has mostly combat and some platforming, there are other parts of the game that has you flying in spaceships and just getting to the end of the level. Despite the game having three chapters, there is also a bonus chapter called A New Hope, which can be unlocked if the player has completed all three chapters and collected enough studs. As I mentioned before, the game has a free play mode, where the player can use different characters for an already completed chapter and can access hidden areas that couldn't be accessed in the story mode. The game also has a hub world called Dexter's Diner, from which the player can choose which level to go to, and also where the player can purchase new characters and extras with the studs they have collected. And so that's the concept and gameplay of how LEGO Star Wars works. On its release in 2005, it became a hit with many critics and gamers, mainly younger gamers. Many critics praised the game for having no frustrating difficulty, having tons of replay value, the cooperative gameplay and the theme of the game that not only made it fun for kids but for older players as well, and the game has also made a port to the Game Boy Advance, with similar but also different features added in. And so the success of LEGO Star Wars led to a new video game franchise created by Traveller's Tales themselves. Now guys, since this franchise has a buttload of games, I can't talk about each of them. Instead, I'll talk about the series as a whole. First off, LEGO Star Wars then got a sequel, 
Lego Star Wars 2 the original trilogy, which was based on the Star Wars films A New Hope, The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. It pretty much plays just like the original, but with more content like customising your own playable characters and special abilities that can be unlocked as the game progresses. There isn't much to say about it, however reception wise it got a lot more praise than the original for its new features and comedic content and was ported to many other consoles like the PlayStation Portable. Traveler Sales then released a compilation game with the two LEGO Star Wars games called LEGO Star Wars The Complete Saga. So with the LEGO Star Wars games completed, Traveler's Tales decided to go a new direction with the series and make LEGO versions of other cinema and comic book media like Batman, Indiana Jones, Harry Potter and Pirates of the Caribbean. However, later, Traveler's Tales released a third installment to the LEGO Star Wars games, LEGO Star Wars 3 The Clone Wars. Much like the second game, it follows the same formula introduced in the first game, but adds new features like Seam Swap, where the player can switch between different teams to complete many tasks, and for the first time, boss battles. For the other LEGO games, LEGO Batman's features are more based on gadgets and new moves, like walking on tightropes, and has more unique abilities based on the comic book and films based on Batman. The, Andi the Indiana Jones version has different kinds of abilities for each character and has new collectibles introduced in the series which are called artifacts. The Harry Potter versions play from years 1 to 4 and 5 to 7. They play just like the, le the other Lego versions, only with the ability to cast spells and use them for various situations, which is the main core of the gameplay for this version. And finally, the Pirates of the Caribbean version which introduces new features like hidden secrets and giving the characters the ability to jump higher and swim underwater. Although not all of the games are different from each other, since they just use the same formula that LEGO Star Wars had created, all of the other versions have also been praised by critics and fans alike. Well, except for Pirates of the Caribbean, which had received some mixed to average reviews. So the franchise as a whole is fairly is a fairly decent achievement from Traveller's Tales. I wouldn't say it's one of the best franchises of all time, because like I said, the games do suffer from sharing the same kind of formula. But if you're into cooperative games and co or combat action games in general, then you could definitely check these games out. Just don't go in with high expectations. In conclusion, Traveller's Tales may not be one of the most recognisable video game companies out there, but when it comes to our childhoods, they have created games that have given us an explosion of nostalgia. They have created some of the most memorable Disney slash Pixar movie based games, have made two games for the, both the Sonic and the Crash Bandicoot franchises, and are one of the only companies from the UK to have been praised for making good children's games that have also made it fun for older gamers. Of course, not all of their games may have aged well, like, well, Rascal for example, but even so, this company still gets some recognition for the games that they have produced for many gamers' childhoods. And so, to conclude this retrospective, I'm going to count down the top 10 best works by Traveller's Tales, all based on my opinion, of course. Here we go, number 10, Sonic R, an OK Sonic racing game. Number 9, Crash Bandicoot The Wrath of Cortex, an average if unspectacular entry to the Crash series. Number 8, Muppet Race Mania, pretty enjoyable for a Mario Kart clone. Number 7, Haven Call of the King, average platform with some redeeming factors. Number 6, Toy Story, a frustrating but enjoyable 2D platformer. Number 5, Pugsy, for Traveller's Tales' first platformer, it holds up well. Number 4, Toy Story 2, for a Super Mario 64 clone, it still has a lot of very fun moments. Number 3, Lego Star Wars. The definitive LEGO game for me. Number 2, Crash from Sanity. Possibly the best Crash game not made by Naughty Dog. And number 1, Mickey Mania. A top notch 2D platformer with the right challenge, platforming and style. Well guys, that was my retrospective series on Traveller's Tales. This is Zookstar1000 saying good night, good luck and stay tuned next time where I do a remake of my Grand Theft Auto retrospective. So see you all in the next video.